welcome. Give me a minute. I need to hide this. Okay. So, um, welcome to today's session where we'll be discussing about congenital heart disease. And this is the third part. In the first part, we, we discussed about uh, a cyanotic shunt anomalies. Then in the second part, we discussed about cyanotic shunt anomalies. Then in this session, we'll be discussing non-shunt anomalies, okay? We, which are a cyanotic, but uh, in some cases, they can be cyanotic. Now, we'll be discussing co aortic coarctation, okay? And the two forms, and under each form, we'll be discussing the morphology and clinical features. So welcome all my name is Horace Manini, and I'm here that time now. So, okay, why, why is it this baby? It's not sure. Give me a minute. So, let's, let's see. These are malformations which are associated with the uh, obstructive lesions, okay? So, congenital obstruction of blood flow can occur at the level of the heart or within more distally within the great vessels, okay? Such as the outer, or oh, yes, the outer main. Now, obstruction can also occur at proximal to the valve, such as the subpalmonic stenosis, which I showed in the UF, but Relatively common examples of congenital obstructions are pulmonic valve stenosis, aortic valve stenosis, or atresia, and coaptation of the aorta. And this will be our uh, discussion for today. So, coaptation of the aorta or aortic coaptation. Now, coaptation is simply a narrowing or constriction of the aorta, and it is a common form of obstructive congenital heart disease. Now, males are affected twice as often as females. But females with Turner syndrome at, uh, frequently have coarctation. Turner syndrome XO. Now, coarctation can occur as a solitary defect, but in more than 50% of the cases, it, usually, it is usually accompanied by the bicuspid, bicuspid aortic valve. Now, remember the aortic valve is usually has three, three cusps. Okay, the classic Mercedes Benz appearance. Okay. But in this case, in the bicuspid aortic valve, you will meet there is one large cusp and one smaller cusp. But then within the larger cusp, there will be a midline lafe. And you, that, that midline lafe shows incomplete uh, separation of the uh, cusps. Okay? And these bicuspid aortic valves are more prone to, to stenosis okay? uh, due to calcification. Now, aortic valve stenosis, Atriceptor defect, VSD, or mitral regurgitation can also be present. Now, let's look at the forms of aortic coarctation. We have the impartile form, which is associated with a patent ductus arteriosus. In this case, the constriction usually lies distal to the aortic arch, but proximal to the patent ductus arteriosus. So it is an infantile preductor form. Okay. So in this case, it will present as there will be lower extremity cyanosis in infants, often at birth. You can, you can, you can understand why there will be cyanosis because there will be a right to left uh, shunt because, they, because of these patent ductus seriosus. Then it is, it is associated with Turner syndrome. Okay. Then we have the adult post ductal form, which is not associated with a patent ductus seriosus. In this case, the coarctation lies distal to the aortic arch within the area uh, of where the ligamentum arteriosum is found and presents as hypertension, there'd be hypertension in the upper extremities and hypotension with weak pulses in the lower extremities. Whenever you, 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 you have a patient, then you measure the blood pressure of the upper extremities. You find that it is elevated, but those of the lower extremities is uh, very low you, you want to, to, to suspect either uh, this aortic coarctation, okay? Now, but if you measure the, the you find hypotension, hypo, if you find hypotension in upper extremities, but hypertension in, uh, in the raw extremities, you want to suspect takayasu arteritis, okay? So 
please differentiate between Takayasu arteritis and aortic coarctation, the uh, adult form. In aortic coarctation, there'll be hypertension in the upper extremities and hypertension in the lower extremities. In the other case, there'll be a hypertension in the upper extremities and uh, the pressure will be more elevated in the lower limbs. That is in Takayasu arteritis. Now, which is a, a, a large vessel, uh, uh, vascul uh, vasculitis, and it is a form of a granulomatous inflammation. Now, collateral circulation usually develop across the intercostal arteries, and these engorged arteries, the engorged uh, anterior and posterior intercostal arteries, usually cause notching of the ribs of the on the X-ray. So you'll find notching, like it's like the lower, the lower portion of the ribs have been beaten off. Okay, so it is also the the adult form. Uh, adult postdoctoral form is associated mainly with the bicuspid aortic valve. So this is what I'm saying. You can see we have two forms. Here you can see aortic coarctation. This is a preductal form. Okay, so this is the infertile form because you can see a patent ductus arteriosa. So cyanosis in the lower extremities. This is the infertile preductal form. And this is the, you can see, out quotation within the area of the ligamentum arteriosum. So there is no patent ductus arteriosus. This is the adult post ductal form. Okay. And, and uh, in this case, there will be hypertension in the upper extremities because you can understand why there will be hypertension of in the upper extremities, but hypertension in the lower extremities. Okay. So here you can see this constriction, okay, the aortic uh, coarctation that here, okay. Then you can see, in this case, this is an X-ray. Then you can see the lower surfaces of these ribs is like this. They have been beaten off, okay, have been beaten off. So that is what is known as notching, and it is due to uh, formation of collateral channels, okay. Uh, these collateral channels, they like erode the uh, lower borders of the ribs, and this is pathognomic of aortic, uh, aortic coarctation. Now, let's look at the morphology of the preductal coarctation or the infertile preductal coarctation. It is usually characterized by there is a circumferential narrowing of the aortic segment between the left subclavian artery and the ductus arteriosus. Remember, the arch of aorta has the three branches brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid. Then left subclavian artery. Then, uh, from in 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 fatal, in uh, intrauterine life, uh, the 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 uh, uh, ductus arteriosus will originate from the pulmonary trunk and join the aorta. Okay, so in this case, the coarctation will be between these two segments. So there will be a patent ductus arteriosus, but so this constriction will lie these two to left subclavian artery, but proximal to the patent ductus arteriosus. Now, the ductus arteriosus is, pat is patent and it is a source of unoxygenated blood delivered to the distal aorta and hence cyanosis of the lower extremities. Now, pulmonary trunk is dilated okay, to accommodate the increased blood flow because now the right side of the heart will now perfuse the body distal to the narrowed segment. So there'd be right ventricular hypertrophy. So in this case, since the the ductus arteriosus is getting its blood from the pulmonary trunk, which is the outflow tract of the right ventricle. The right ventricle now will, will act as a, as, a, as a systemic pump to supply blood to the, the region distal to the uh, constriction of the aorta. So it will undergo hypertrophy. So what about in the in the adult uh, uh, postductal coarctation? Now the aorta is sharply constricted by a tissue ridge adjacent to the non-patent non -patent ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum arteriosum is the adult uh, uh, remnant of uh, the ductus arteriosus. Now, the constricted segment in this case is made up of smooth muscles and uh, elastic fibers derived from the aortic media, okay? And uh, proximal to the, to the coaptation, uh, the the aortic arch and its branches, the brachiocephalic trunk, uh, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian artery, they are usually dilated, and the left ventricle in this case is hypertrophied. Okay, so if we can go back to this image we had here, okay, 
you can see this is the in this case the there is right ventricular hypertrophy in the infantile infantile uh preductor form but in the uh adult post ductal form post ductal form there is left ventricular hypertrophy so please note those uh, uh subtle differences okay as we are here now this you can see this is the adult post ductal form you can see the constriction just here so, and you can see how dilated the aortic arch is together with the brachiocephalic trunk the left common carotid and the left subclavian artery okay so clinical features let's start with the preductor coarctation with a patent ductus satellitus it represents early in life that is why it is called infantile infantile and uh, there will be cyanosis to the lower half of the body, okay? And without in intervention, infants die in the neonatal period. So you need to, surgery is required. So uh, surgical intervention is required where you can surgically dissect the, the, that constriction and conduct an end-to-end -end anastomosis, okay? Then the postductal coarctation without a patent ductus satellitus is asymptomatic okay and the disease may remain unrecognized well into other tribe now there is upper extremity hypertension but there is hypotension and passlessness in the lower extremities okay and uh, the lower extremities there, there, there be claudication and coldness now exuberant exuberant collateral circulation around around the the coarctation often develop through marketry that be enlarged intercostal and internal mammary arteries. Now, expansion of the flow through these vessels reach, it usually leads to the radiographically visible notching of the ribs. Okay, I had showed you that. So, in this case, you can see here pointed in A, this is the coarctation. Okay, you can see the the the, the the coarctation okay the coarctation then you can see the these c are intercostal arteries okay you can see the how how well dilated they are these are the posterior intercostals then you can see the anterior not the anterior rather the internal mammary artery or the internal thoracic artery you can see how well uh dilated it is okay and the, the reason for this dilation is in an is an attempt to bypass that coarctation. But you can see in this case, there is a, 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 an unusual event because we have also a coarctation in the abdominal aorta, okay? So, but for this case, I want you to focus here. You can see a coarctation in the uh, 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 aorta. So this is the aortic coarctation, okay? So you can see the notching I had told you, Okay, and this notching is due to to uh, uh it usually develop when collateral circulation develops develops in a, an in an attempt to bypass the aortic narrowing, and this uh, bypass circulation occurs between the anterior intercostals and the posterior intercostals. Remember, the anterior intercostals originate from the internal thoracic artery, where the posterior intercostals, rather the the third through the eleven, originate from the uh, the descent in thoracic artery, okay, and uh, but remember the the first two, a posterior intercostals originate from the supreme intercostal artery, which is a branch from the costal cervical trunk, from the second part of the subclavian artery. So, notching will be seen uh, uh, from the third uh, through the twelve the ribs, but not for the second and the first rib because there the, there be no uh, collateral circulations. Okay, so, uh, okay, that, then there is also th this, the, the, the three sign, this, you can see how it is forming like a three. This three sign is, is, is due to constriction along the aorta and uh, followed by post-stenotic post -stenotic dilation. So, a constriction in the aorta followed by post-stenotic post -stenotic dilation. Okay, we should produce the, the, the three sign. Okay, so I think uh, 
uh, that is that. And uh, thank you for your attention. I don't know who, who, who spelled that, but that, that is a typo. Thank you for your attention. And uh, please follow for more of med content. Uh, thank you.